electrical circuit troubleshooting is one of the easiest service operations if you know what you're doing. And it's one of the most exasperating if you tackle it without knowing what you're doing. Knowing what you're doing involves just two things. Understanding what a circuit is and knowing where the circuit goes. When you know these, everything else is just a matter of making good connections. A circuit is a complete conducting path for electricity to flow from battery to load and back to battery. A circuit may be closed with electrical current flowing or open with no current flowing. In a car, most circuits are parallel. In parallel, each circuit has full battery voltage. Of course, the circuits must be completed by going to battery negative through the chassis ground. But there are also series circuits that act a little differently. A series circuit has more than one load, and the battery voltage is divided among the loads. Here we have two equal loads in series. 12 volts at the battery drop 6 volts over one lamp, and the remaining 6 volts over the other lamp. Shorting all 12 volts through one lamp will double the voltage and increase the current and brightness. Another series circuit which shows a voltage drop is the heater blower motor circuit. Again, we have resistors in series which drop the voltage to the blower motor and change the speed. One resistor in the circuit drops part of the voltage. Two resistors in series drop more voltage. Voltage, current, and resistance. Let's define these right now. Voltage is the electrical pressure or difference in potential between two points and is measured with a voltmeter. Battery voltage is caused by chemical action. This action is reversible, an alternator being used to restore the battery to its original condition. Current is the flow of electricity, actually electrons along a conductor. Current is measured in amperes or amps. Resistance in a circuit limits the current flow. All operating circuits have voltage, current, and resistance. Fuses are put into circuits as protection devices. A fuse will melt and open when the current exceeds the amp rating designed for the circuit. For example, if a motor seizes. A short circuit will also blow a fuse when the load resistance is bypassed. Without a load, the excessively high current melts the fuse. On the other hand, abnormally high resistance causes other electrical problems. Battery won't accept a charge? A low rate of charge might make you think so. But actually, this problem is nothing more than high resistance caused by the corrosion material between the cable and the battery post. High resistance is seen again when the ground return circuit for the headlamps is poor. The headlamps get brighter when the alternator speeds up, fade when they get only battery current. Your simplest troubleshooting tool is also one of the most important, a jumper wire. Connect it to a known good power source and you have an excellent power supply. If you suspect a switch, a jumper will quickly tell you if it's bad. The same with a ballast resistor. A test light gives you a load which you can use for tracing a circuit. Ground one end and you can easily follow the power path. When a short or overloaded circuit keeps blowing the fuse, don't short across the fuse cavity while you look for the problem. Instead, use a 15 amp cycling circuit breaker to keep the circuit complete while you look for the short or overload. A good voltmeter is necessary to tell you how much voltage you have at any point. One thing you should remember about a voltmeter is the hookup. 
always in parallel, never in series. The voltmeter hookup always parallels the load circuit because you don't want the very high resistance meter disrupting the circuit. A good voltmeter is a necessity for many tests. For battery voltage, for different voltage levels found in the ESA system, for the voltage drop across a circuit component, for charging circuit voltages and in many other places. The ohmmeter is another very useful tool for electrical circuit troubleshooting. Ohmmeters measure electrical resistance in units called ohms. An ohmmeter is an excellent continuity checker too, for example in checking for a good ground connection. Ohmmeters have batteries for their power supply and no other power is necessary. Ohmmeters are never used in hot circuits or with a key on. Ammeters, on the other hand, are always used with hot circuits. Hook up with the red lead to the positive side and always in series with a load. Ammeters are built to handle currents only up to the meter's limit. You always have to open the circuit to insert an ammeter and do not have to open the circuit to use a voltmeter. As we said in the beginning, electrical circuit troubleshooting is easy if you know what you're doing. The only way you can be sure of the correct circuit is to look it up. Best place to start your circuit tracing is with the general information at the beginning of the wiring diagram section. You'll find bulkhead connector cavity identifications, all main circuit identification codes, and all fuse applications. Let's see how that mechanic got the headlamp circuit crossed with a flasher circuit. Now, the bulkhead connector chart for this car shows three circuits with flashers, right turn with a tan wire, left turn with a light green wire, and hazard with a pink wire. But there's a double red wire in the right turn flasher cavity, number 29. Unless you are very familiar with the circuit, always check the correct wiring diagram for the vehicle you're working on. The nice thing about electrical circuits is that they're simple. In the end, power goes from the battery to the component and back in a simple closed circuit. If the component doesn't work, the circuit is open or shorted. or the component itself is bad. Most electrical circuit problems are that simple. Bent terminals, dirty terminals, or maybe a small pin in a large hole because someone cleaned it out with a screwdriver. Now let's troubleshoot a typical problem. This car blows the fuse every time the parking lamp switch is turned on. We see by the manual that the fuse feeds several lamp circuits. Parking lamps, tail lamps, license plate lamps, and side markers. Since the fuse blows, one of these circuits is pulling too much current. But which one? To find out, Trace all the circuits so that you can isolate the one causing the trouble. You'll find that all the rear lamps feed from a single harness connector. Located at the left side cowl. Now, temporarily insert your circuit breaker across the fuse cavity. This will serve to complete the circuit and will cycle until you've isolated the short. By opening the harness connector, you can find out if the short is in the front harness or in the rear harness. Now you find out that the front parking lamp works and the circuit breaker has stopped cycling. 
That means the short is in the rear body harness or in the rear lamps. An examination of all the lamps on the rear harness shows nothing wrong. So we remove all the lamp bulbs to eliminate their ground feedbacks and check the power feeds, which should show open with the rear harness disconnected. But we find that the tail lamp feed is shorted, so the short has to be in the harness. You'll find other examples of electrical troubleshooting in your Master Tech reference book. Take the time to work them out, and you'll soon be an expert. When you come right down to it, electrical circuit troubleshooting is only a matter of checking both ends of a piece of wire connecting two points. Once you know where they go, the rest is easy.